good evening good evening welcome i welcome all of us here this night thank you all for making our time to be in this meeting with us <laughs> thank you ma'am that means i'm looking like under 20. <laughs> i want to be a teenager again this adult life service is a scam they didn't tell us that being an adult is very difficult <laughs> I will go back to 16. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Good evening once again for those that are just joining us now. Oh, good evening to my YouTube family as well. It's been a long time. <laughs> um, you guys are always welcoming me back to this, my channel. <laughs> but this time I will be the one welcoming people because it's my channel. Good evening. Okay, so I think we should be starting by, by now. Others join us or they will watch our replay or they can watch on our YouTube channel. So, we are here again to talk about uh, our fertility goals for the new year 2024. So, the year 2023 is almost out. We thank God for the blessings of 2023. We thank God for so many blessings, so many things. Many of us, many of our friends, family members are not here with us again. Some have passed on, they've died, but we are here. We are still here. It's not a coincidence that we are still here, neither is it um, a mystic that God preserved us. That's not to say the ones that are, are dead, God did not love them. But we thank God that we are still here today. And so many people are stressed, so many people are angry, some are sad, and so many people are very, very happy because they are celebrating because they can't wait for this 2023 to end. They've, God has answered their prayers in so many ways. Some have had children, some are pregnant, some are relocated. Like so many of their prayers have been answered, which is still very good. Some can't wait for the year to go out so that they will. Some already have finished the year. Like for them, 2023 has finished. It has ended. Whether it brought out good memories or bad, they are now looking forward to what 2024 has in hold for them. So, um, whatever category you find you find yourself we still thank god because um first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says that give thanks to god for it is the will of god we should all give thanks to god for everything that happened in our life good bad ugly it is the will of god is the bible that said it so basically the essence of this life is to set new goals for the coming year but before we set these goals we are going to be revealing the passing year 2023 that is about to end we are going to reveal it so we have some questions to answer ourselves it's not like it's by force to answer them but we do so searching i'm asking myself you're asking yourself how was this passing year for me this 2023 how was this year for me what did i do what did i not do was I sleeping too much? Was I procrastinating? Ask yourself, how was 2023 for me? From positive to negative, good, bad, ugly, in your fertility journey, your marriage, your life generally, your relationship with God, your relationship with people, your relationship with time and money management, how was 2023? That's our number one question in revealing the passing year, 2023. And then number two, number two question is, was I able to achieve all the goals I set for 2023? Some people call it resolution. Some, but personally, I, I used to say resolutions are different from goals. Goals are more specific and then like, they are more of a life, let me say, for people that are doing projects, setting targets for sales and 
all that then when it comes to fertility sometimes resolution is more or less like the best word for it because for fertility sometimes when you say it's a goal for example you say i'm setting a goal to get pregnant in may of 2024 that's not possible you are not god it might not it might not work but at the same time it's still a goal but there's a way to go about it that it will not be that hard and that difficult so was I able to achieve all the goals I set for 2023? Some people, like when the year is ending and a new year is starting, like people are excited. It's just in the air for everybody. Even babies know. Babies that can't talk, they don't know what is happening. Everybody is happy. People write, people even do, um, what is it, what did they call this board? Um, Kai. This board that people make. You know, people do the board. A lot of people do this board, but personally, I'm not good at creativity, so I don't bother myself. I just carry a piece of paper. I carry my book and I, I write them down, and then I tick them as the year is going and all that. But people do vision board, yes. They call it vision board. People do vision board and all that. But very few people follow this thing. Once the Christmas is over, the New Year is the celebration, the festivities are over, a lot of people just get lazy some just go back to their some just go back to their normal lives like now even this year it will still not work it might not work like it's just the same thing the world is still bad the government has not changed so that's why we're asking these questions now one number three question is what did i do about my fertility that impacted me negatively what did I do? What did you do about your fertility journey that impacted you negatively? Did you take a supplement that um, take, uh, took your period to the next level, maybe stopped your period, make, make it irregular? Were you pregnant and you didn't know and you took something, you treated malaria, treated infection and it came out? Uh, did you just got tired at some point and say, let it be, let, let, me, let me leave it? In God's hands and then you are feeling if only I did this maybe it would have been better and the number four question is what did I do about my fertility that impacted me positively what went well did you do a lifestyle change that made you ovulate most people have not been ovulating for some time so if maybe you were on my program or you did something one or the other and then you started ovulating regularly it is a positive step some people are a bit of overweight some have lost weight some actually got pregnant for the first time in how many years and then a lot of good things even if you didn't end up getting pregnant but at least you are one step ahead of where you were last year early this year and so on and so forth is something good it mustn't be that you got pregnant because that is the steps that lead us to positive pregnancy tests and then we'll carry it to full time and we'll deliver safely you don't just get up from blood tubes and then boom you get pregnant that should be a miracle from maybe they prayed for you or something but when we are talking about what you did physically we are talking about the step by step something that you did that you knew that okay it was because of my impact because i did this and that that i got pregnant or it impacted my fertility in a better way i'm not where i used to be before and uh, setting the goals for the coming year 2024 which i call as well uh we can as well call them our new year's uh, fertility resol resolutions the goals that we are going to set there is a way uh, there is a way for everyone to have a family but then we have to set goals to arrive at that then what are we going to do what are these goals what are there are some of the things that we need to ask ourselves and be truthful to ourselves before we can say yes i am going to do this i'm going to do that so number one is how long will i have been trying to conceive by 2024 by 2024 january or any year at all how long will you be trying to conceive will it be one year two years three years four years some people have been trying for so long that they can't even say it off heart they have to count their fingers or check a calendar before they can say oh i started trying by july uh so 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 yeah so by july this 2024 will be five years three years 
10 years. So how long will you have been trying to conceive by the year 2024? And then number two, we have how old will I be by next year? How old will I be by next year? You have been trying to conceive. Maybe you started when you were 30, you were 35, you started when you were 20. How old will you be by 2024? Because your decisions impact your age, impact your fertility and any decision you are going to make afterward. If you are much younger, for younger women um, that are less than 30, they still have a very long time let me put it like that they still have time to say let me try naturally for some time some of them just need to do very little like maybe uh, optimize their fertility just eat healthy just reduce your stress level take some vitamins and then um track your ovulation know your menstrual cycle know the right time to have sex with your partner your husband and then boom they get pregnant and even if these ladies these younger women that are from 18 to say 30 decide to go in for an ivf procedure their chances of getting positive results are higher than older women and then for women who are from 35 and above they have a smaller frame of time they they have a smaller time to say oh let me try for naturally you might try naturally but your time is ticking your fertility clock is ticking and it's not like when you are older you can't get pregnant naturally but it gets harder and harder and harder and then before you know it you're going to you start having menopausal sim symptoms you start having things like weight gain a lot of things come they say water retention and the rest and then it becomes more difficult but when you are younger it is easier so you consider how old will i be by 2024 how long will i have been trying to conceive how old would i be by this time that alone is giving you a clearer picture of what you should do and then what you shouldn't do and what our advice is not to do it because people are doing because you might say oh i have to stick with this plan or this particular um goal and that and this but the person you are looking at might be way younger than you are but you don't know or maybe way older than you are but you don't know so following them because they are doing it might not work for you. you have to follow your own decision and your own plan that works for you then number three have i have i and my husband run the necessary test there are so many people that they will just go into the doctor's office and they'll tell the doctor i've been trying for one year and uh, nothing has happened and i've heard so many of them they'll say the doctor say just going for ivf some of them don't even test them to know whether it's just stress or they have blood tubes or this women have a uh, excuse me or these women have um uh, ovulation issues or it, it might be the man that has chronic infection or the man has um a sperm issues they will just say going for ivf and now most times many of them they will say i'm going for IVF, and i'm like why are you going for IVF? they say i don't know my doctor recommended it he just saw us and because we said we have been trying to conceive for a year and nothing happened he said we should go in for ivf and the options of having multiple was higher and we are going and that's not the right thing to do i'm sorry to put it that way but you are supposed to do tests to know why pregnancy hasn't happened for a whole six months of trying to conceive naturally for a whole one year for a whole two or three years and then some people because they have not done uh, any test they, they don't even know where to start from they don't even know what to do and then the fourth question is what fertility treatment options are available for someone of my age again for somebody that is very young they have vast options they have so many fertility options that are waiting out there for them they can do anything and anything the doctor might decide to say go and try naturally for a whole year go and eat healthy go and do exercise uh just to relax uh come and boost your ovulation let me check your husband's sperm and all that but then for a woman that is older from 35 and above 40 45 her treatment options are very very limited 
for some of them when they look at you they go straight to go for donor uh, go for surrogacy and all that they will even say go for um uh, donor sperm there are not many options for women who are older i've heard so many of my clients who tell me some of them are 40 and above and they'll be like god forbid i don't want to go for ivf i want to conceive naturally myself and i'm like um okay sometimes i i really don't want to be in the space of and uh, ivf is good and all that i don't do ivf i don't have a fertility clinic that they will say okay you want to get my money but when people are going through stuff, sometimes you have to be very careful to advise because some of them will take it personal. Some of them will say, it's my decision with my husband. Some of them will say, my religion, my pastor say, um, my religion does not warrant IVF and all that. So you are just limited to the kind of advice you will give. But if personally you will ask me, this is removing all selfishness of give somebody money or do not give somebody money. If you are trying to conceive and you are 40 and above and you have done truly, you have done treatment and these treatments are not working, by all means, you need to go in for IVF. Try the next treatment option. What is there for me? I've heard people say and, and um, I've, I'll ask them, okay, so some of them will just go to the doctor and they'll say, you have cyst, your womb is gummed together, uh, we need to operate you, and then boom, they have done five operations. They have gone through five surgeries with one fertility hospital. No second option, no third option. I'm like, why did they just you? Especially when you have bad news, you have to check again and again in different places. You don't have, nobody has your life, nobody has the right to command you. Especially when it has to do with your destiny, it has to do with your money. Even if they are going to do it for free, as far as your life and destiny is concerned, they told you you have diagnosis of this, that and that, or you have been doing a treatment with someone for a whole two, three years, and nothing is coming. It is time to think. Let me find another option. Let me hear what another person has to say about me, about my body, about my fertility. I've had a client that she did almost six um, surgeries with one doctor, one hospital. And I'm like, what happened? Okay, how many hospitals did this surgery? Say one. I said, for 12 years? She said, yes. I said, why? She said, eh, because the doctor is expert. I said, the doctor is expert. The doctor is not God. I didn't hear you say it was God that was doing these surgeries. As far as that doctor is not God, you have to look for another option. Because personally, they say they want to operate me and I'm boom, okay with that. At least go to the second person. The person will say, uh, yes, yeah, this is what is doing you another. Somebody might even see something different and the person might be right. So this is why we're here today. You don't have to bury yourself. Some people, because they are trying to conceive, they don't have confidence again. I'm wondering why, what is happening to you? They don't have a say. People are talking and then they are behaving as if they are foolish. Everybody that has a child is right, even if they cannot speak good English, even if they cannot put food on the table, the fact that she can conceive, she's right. No, that's not true. You have the right to decide what should be done to you. You have the right to decide who should talk to you and how they should talk to you. You have the right to decide what decision to take Having a child is not the end of everything. It's not the only thing that is there to achieve in life. I've never seen where somebody that has not had a child yet is a sin. Nobody has the right to have children. We all don't know when conception happens. Even for the husband that has sex, even for the woman who has sex. My mother-in-law will say we don't know the night that pregnancy happened. Even for IVF. You do not know the night that implantation happened. You can only feel cramps. You don't know the night that it happened. So you are not God. It shows that God is still better than all of us. Whatever doctor, whoever, fertility coach, fertility expert, we are all vessels that God is using. So nobody should have the, the final say in your life. That is why we sing in churches that Jehovah has the final say. If we have the final say, doctor has the final say, pastor has the final say, we will not say God has the final say. So by all means, weigh all the treatment options and go for them. 
do not hold yourself down if it means the money is too much and you know deep down that you and your partner can plan for this treatment and go back plan and pray if you know that oh this treatment we can't afford it not even the next 10 years by all means there are plenty several options out there there are hospitals there are government hospitals that are cheaper even private hospitals that are cheaper and there are some doctors that are truly god fearing that when you talk to them they are almost doing it for free I know what I'm talking about. So, number five. Okay, am I determined to give the treatment option available to me? My all best. We just finished talking about it. I didn't even know. So, ask yourself this question. Some people will never. I've seen clients that, and I know people that they can never do anything for more than six weeks. The fact they will start like an impatient is their number one goal. <laughs> don't know what is their problem like they have tried to conceive so much that they don't have patience again they will start this one for three months do this one for one week do this one like they are everywhere they say jack of all trades is master of none try to do something give it time that's why we are talking about goals say let's say okay from january uh 2024 to march 2024 i am going to be trying naturally and i'm going to be eating healthy i'm going to be taking supplements and by the time i get to march and i'm not pregnant i am going in to do all the tests again with my husband and then we are going to start with iui or after iui we'll try and see if this iui did not work we can go for another one or talk with our doctor and see if IVF is the next option for us. And again, it is not everybody that must carry a baby by themselves. You can go for surrogacy. Who say if you are a surrogate mother, you are not a parent? By all means, you are a parent. And if they say the only option that is there for you, and truly, it is egg donor. Pray to God to give you the best egg and the best donor. And go for it. It's sperm donor. The everybody there's so many ways to end up as parents some people say i must carry my children i'm wondering are you in competition with competition with anybody that is not the right thing to say when you are asking god for a gift you don't tell god that it is a must he has the final say so why not pray and trust him some people have had so many clients that will be doing my IVF preparatory program, they have already registered two cycles, three cycles in a fertility in an IVF clinic. And then they end up pregnant and they have children. One even had twins, you know, and their money is still there. Some of them, after delivering these children, they will go back and do the IVF. Some of them don't even get to do these IVFs again for any time. They don't even, sometimes they don't even refund their money. But they are planning, at least they were doing something. And then God came through. So you can't say, I can never. Especially if you are. 35 and above, please stop saying you must carry your pregnancy natural. It must be you. Someone else can carry this pregnancy if you have the money to give. People have adoptions. People even adopt embryos. That is both the egg and the sperm. And they carry these babies or they adopt it and then do surrogacy with it. And they still, they're still parents. Some people, it's just adoption. They have adopted children. And these children are still their own. Some people are guidance to children. Offers even their own uh, sisters, brothers, children. They are still parents. So I don't know where we get the mentality of I must, I must get pregnant myself. I must carry my children. What if your body did not warrant it? What if God does not design it like that for you? It's true that the Bible says we should multiply and fill the earth. He didn't say we must get pregnant and fill the earth. He said multiply. So there are so many ways of multiplying. So as the year is running out and then another one is coming, please keep that in mind. When you hear the options that you have, pray to God. Talk to your partner. Both of you should come to terms. Some people will say, my husband does not want to hear about surrogacy or donor. It is true. But people can still re-strategize. There's nothing. My husband will say there's nothing cast in stone that it must be like this. You can go back to your drawing board and say, okay, uh, honey, my love, however you guys address yourself. We have been on this issue of no surrogacy, no donor, no whatever for 5, 10, 15 years. And they said, whatever you keep doing repeatedly, that is not working. It's insane. It's not realistic. How about we just 
go back and then come forward and then try this thing. Nobody has to know, it's just me and you. Let's do the next thing. You can pray about it before confronting the difficult partner. It could be the wife that is Adam and it could be the husband. It doesn't matter. But the person that is more lenient can pray about it. If you know that there's a family member, a mother, a father, an uncle that this person respects so much and this person can help you pray before you go to this person and tell this person, let us pray together and help me. Let's talk to this this other partner so that we can achieve this goal because this year i won't go to answer me i'm tired of waiting i'm tired of crying i'm tired of lamenting i want my i was talking to one of my clients a few days ago and she said we have been on this case for five years or four years let my discussion with her change let us stop talking about trying to conceal let her be calling me that baby is not sleeping a baby has been crying baby is pooing too much so that we can and discuss and we were laughing it's true the discussion needs to change from time trying to conceive to a mommy let's talk about babies now let's talk about only trying to conceive alone then in order for all these things to come to be realistic you have to number one plan planning is the number one thing that you need to do plan with your partner the both of you should come together and plan create every fertility journey has a destination you are going to create your family to arrive at a destination so you have to avoid regret you have to avoid chaos you have to avoid being everywhere by planning because we were going to deal with money when it comes to fertility and having children a lot of money is involved you have to spend so much money it takes your time mentally physically spiritually so are you prepared physically are you prepared mentally are you prepared spiritually because it's not everybody that is prepared some people have the money but they don't have the time they don't have the mind the fact that you are 30 35 does not make you ready for childbirth i had a client that had a child and she kept complaining that I never told her it is this hard. I know so many people have clients that they will have children and thereafter they have high blood pressure. They are suffering from a lot of things. I heard the woman said she regrets having children. Someone said she wants to run away and go and rest. Like it's exhausting. That does not mean you can't do it. But truly some people are not ready. The fact that people are doing it around you, the fact that you have money to do it doesn't make you ready. Pray about it. Pray. And then some people are ready. Their partner is ready. I've seen the cases where the husband is complaining and the wife is taking pills. I've seen a case where they recently somebody chatted me up that he told the wife, let them go for treatment for fertility. And the wife packed her things and left the house when he was back. And this woman is 32 years. So it's not like she's 18 or 20. She's already in her 30s, but she is not ready. She married the man not because she wanted to have children, because she wanted to have company and love her husband. But this man is looking at, I'm an evil man. He even told me that he's an evil man. He wants to have children. But I said, have you discussed this having children with your wife? He said he did, but she has never been so excited about it. And these are the things we are talking about. You people have to plan together. You have to be on the same page. It shouldn't be that you will force a man. Some people get pregnant so that the man will marry them. Or the man will say, if I get pregnant, he won't have an option. My dear, when it comes to men, when it comes to men, they have options. These people will ignore you. These humans will ignore you. And when you have a child that is crying, that is so demanding, and then a man is there behaving as if he did not know, they can't snore. Their snore can be very annoying when a child is disturbing you. That is when you know that, oh my goodness, <laughs> am I married to myself or this child is meant to answer my name? So the both of you needs to plan physically, spiritually, financially before you can go ahead with this plan. And then number two, we have persistence. You have to be persistent in what we keep you in following this plan. No matter what, have something at the back of your mind that is making you not to give up. Have something. What am I looking? What do I look to gain? Okay, if I have this child, I will be a happy mother. Uh, my husband will be a dad and all those things. They will make you keep at it no matter how difficult it is. No matter how difficult it is. And then number three, you have to keep declaring. See, it's power in declaration. Apostle Selma said, uh, imagination is the only 
thing uh, is the only what um, the only way to travel without a visa. God wants the Holy Spirit wants you to create pictures for Him, and then He will answer you. Imagine yourself having a child. Imagine yourself carrying pregnancy. Sometimes I lie on my bed and I imagine. I tell my children I'm sleeping, go out, and then I'm imagining the things, the positive things I want in my life. And these things, they come to pass because it is God that gave us imagination. And then I open my mouth and declare it. I used to tell myself, by 2024, I'm going to conceive and give birth. And by 2020, I'm going to do this. I'm going to launch my fertile mom coaching school. And all these things come to pass. Sometimes people look at it like this person is mad. There's power in positive imagination and positive declaration. Let Even if you cannot do anything, do this one. And I promise you it will work. If you have ever done it, you will know that I'm saying the truth. Always declare, always imagine positivity. No, even if you look as if nothing is working for you, it is working for you. It is working behind the scenes. And it will soon manifest. And then number four, we have patience. Patience is what will guide you back on the path even when you give up. You know, when you are trying to conceive, it is very hard, I will not lie. I've been there so many times. Some people have had miscarriages. Some people have had um, steel belt. Some people, <clears throat> they've never been pregnant before. They are even wishing that, at least let me be pregnant. Let me too get pregnant and have a miscarriage. So it is very difficult. Nobody's story is better or more difficult than another because if you think another person's story is small, wait until they tell you how heavy they feel that you will say, oh my goodness, I didn't know I underrated. Do not downplay any anybody's um, way, the way they feel about their trying to conceive. Because it is very, very heavy on their mind. It depends on what their story is, what they're expecting. People have goals that they set. Some people want to stop giving birth by the time they are 30. Some people purposely wait 30, they are 40 before they start having children because they wanted to achieve some certain things in their lives. So everybody have a different story. Everybody's story is special and unique. So we will not downplay anybody, but patience is the most important thing. When it's as if it's not going well i will not be able to continue ask god for the grace to be patient father what do i need to do to be patient sometimes we feel it is only pastors men of god that the holy spirit the holy spirit talk to all of us what we call instincts is the holy spirit when you feel my instincts does not lie is the holy spirit sometimes you're like father help me what can i do and boom you have a result sometimes you just turn and then the next step is the right one is the holy spirit so always ask god for the next direction for the grace to be patient even if it means taking a break take a break and then come back so that god will help you you will be patient with it because sometimes it might look as if oh, if i try to start this treatment in january by may i should get my result but then when you get you see that the treatment is prolonging because you thought what you thought was hormonal imbalance and end up being an endometriosis and being a cyst and then it just keeps going they have to go dig in and then do one treatment or the other before you can arrive and before you know it it's already 12 months it's already six months it's already seven months but you need the grace of God. You need patience. You need the Holy Spirit to hold you still. People might have their opinions. That is it's none of your business. What you know is you are focused on God. You are focused on Jesus to give you the grace and the patience to follow through. And then number five is partnership. When you are trying to conceive, you are going to be in partnership with so many people, especially your spouse. That's your number one partner because you have to be in agreement with your spouse some people say i don't care please you truly need to care stop underrating your partners i don't make friends or, or anytime i sit here i tell you i don't make friends with women and i don't involve in men that downplay their partners except if this person is toxic to you if this person is trying because nobody on this planet Earth is perfect we all have our bad sides and our good side and when these bad sides are not as bad as somebody is beating you insulting you it's too stingy it's not even going to church and all those kind of things you can cope with this threat so do not downplay this other person and say 
God for to hell with her or to hell with him, I'll go ahead with another man, I'll go ahead with another woman, I'll go ahead and do my IVF. If he doesn't care after I can afford the money. Mm -mm. That's not the right thing. God does not support that. Find a way to get this person on board. Nobody is an island. See, men go through their own infertility as well. Because we women, we are very emotional. We are crying. We are doing this. You see men saying things like, I don't want to have sex with you again. All the sex I've been having for all these years. What have you done with it? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do with this one. I don't want to continue with it. It is their own way of grieving. They have their own. Some of them, the kind of things they will vomit will be very bad to hear. It will not be uh, favorable to the lady, the woman, or to even your generation. But <clears throat> because that is their own way of crying to God, the Father, I need a child. And there are some men that truly really, they will open their mouth and they will cry. They will lament. So do not say because this person said they are not ready, they don't have money to waste they mean it. Some of them truly, they don't mean it. They're just frustrated. They're just tired of spending money and not getting results. This is the time where both of you will come together and pray and ask God for direction. If he say he does not want to do it again, you can now say, okay, let me be taking care of myself and praying and waiting for when my husband will be ready, when my wife will be ready. You can now be eating healthy, taking supplements, even trying to see one or two doctors that okay since my partner is not ready let me see what i can be doing then there are some men that are truly adamant they say i'm not there's nothing wrong with me my father or my mother had 10 children so i can have those ones they are special breed they need a special anointing that will deal with them but when a partner is just grieving in their own way and then you are getting angry and taking it out of context it's not good and by all means try to avoid talking down on your partners with friends and family once you talk down on these people the people you are talking down on them you have reduced this person it does not matter what the situation is whether it is some people will say it is not my fault it's my partner's fault no it is nobody's fault when you are trying to conceive it is you people's challenge together no matter how healthy you are in this life it is only 50% that you can contribute in that fertility in that childbirth so this other person that you are saying is their fault if this person does not contribute, it means it's not going to be a child in that house. So don't be saying, I am clean. You can never be clean when your other partner is not clean. It's not possible. Both of you are in it together. So it's not like it's somebody's fault. It is our challenge. And we are working towards this thing to get a result. So you're going to be in partnership with your doctors. You're going to be in partnership with your fertility coaches. You're going to be in partnership with your yoga uh, teachers. You're going to be in partnership with your acupuncturists and all that. You have to, sometimes you might need only taking care of yourself, like um, maybe going for an injection to boost your egg, uh, your ovulation, your husband going for taking minor supplement just to boost and all that. But sometimes, especially for other women, it takes so many things. You have to be consistent and you have to do be in partnership and agree with so many people before you can get your result. So when it comes to partnership, and you are going to be in partnership with God as well. Talk to God, talk to the Holy Spirit as well. And then you have positivity. There are times in everyone's life journey, fertility journey, that truly you don't want to do it again. Because truly for some people, they have done it all. Like, <laughs> they have done it all. Some have gone abroad. Some have done so many things. Forget the fact that I say some people have not done anything and they are lamenting. Some have really done so much. They have spent millions. They have putting their time, their money, their effort, both couple, and yet nothing is coming. This type of category of people can just easily say, I don't want to do it again. I am tired. If God does not want to give me a child, let it be. Some of them will even say, God hates me. God is punishing me. But it is not. Sometimes God, God's timing is different from our timing. Sometimes god just wants you to forgive somebody you might not remember sometimes we say we are forgiving someone but our spirit is still angry so so when you get to this type of situation you say father i have come to you in brokenness search me if there's anything in me that is hindering me in conceiving lord cleanse me of it if it is my husband if this is spiritual there's somebody out there that have done something have 
don't go somewhere for my sake not to conceive father answer them on my behalf that's not to say you will leave it you will not do anything again for the next year start afresh even if it means going back to do all the tests again they might find a very little thing that is stopping you from conceiving and you'll be like what this is why i've been trying to conceive for 20 years 18 years i had a client that was trying to conceive thank you so much <laughs> perpetual extension uh i had a client that was trying to conceive for like i think 30 years or so 20 something years and do you know the only challenge this woman had was pcos and this woman had done so many treatments, gone through so many operations, but with one doctor. And then when I met her, with all the things she told me, I'm like, ah, but with all these things you have told me, I'm only seeing PCS. And she's like, what do I mean? I said, well, let's see. At this time, she was already like 46, 47. And then we tried to take care of her body and she conceived. But I think by 10 weeks, she miscarried because I think she was 47 already and her body was resisting. And because of PCS, is the father of miscarriages so and i told her let's try again and then you can try um ivf let's say are you open to ivf she said anything that will make her become a parent she's open and do you know that we worked on this pcs they used her eggs at that age and she had a son but she has been trying before she met me for 20 something years only with pcs so because you have done everything, you have spent money, you have been abroad, home, traditional, even gone to use chicken and up and down, it did not work. That does not mean God is done with you. God is not done. He's still working on you. So you will have to start afresh by the beginning of the year. Go back to your drawing board. But in all these things, the first place to start is with God. The first place to start is with God. Carry your pen and write your prayer points and ask God, what is your next step? If you already have your next step, let God know that this is your next step. It should guide you through and redirect your steps on the right ones. And then number two thing that you need to do is take care of your body first with nutrition, lifestyle changes, the right diet exercises and everything before you can say oh i'm going for ivf i'm trying naturally trying naturally is very very good but then you have to be doing something to enhance your fertility to optimize your whole fertility your whole body and then your husband needs to be doing something taking supplements eating right some people their challenge is even weight it's nothing because they are overweight they have so many some people are not fat but they have high cholesterol and it's stopping them from conceiving stopping implantation it's causing it's causing um uh, implantation failure it's causing their lucia face to be very very short and then for men it's making them to have quick ejaculation erectile dysfunction it's causing them to have kidney disease and all that you need to start doing something it's healthy at least even if you don't know what to do start with the nutrition and as usual um as the end of the year comes i normally do a discount for this season because most people this time most people this time they pay for the, the program and then they go for holidays and then come back and start in january and let me tell you something most people that start this program this time i don't know maybe because of the birth of christ or it's because of the excitement of the new year most of them get pregnant naturally most of them get pregnant the first six months of the year i used to have so many pregnancy testimonies and then that's why you see that as the year is going down so many child uh, birth uh, baby deliveries are there so we have come to that time of the year where we do a discount for the festivities for those who who want to plan their year ahead for those who have spoken with us before and maybe one thing or the other they were not ready maybe financially or there was no time or they were not ready emotionally but maybe now because of the end of the year they want to really give a turn uh maybe do something new and they want to start with us they are going to be discount so the discount starts this night the 24th of 
December. You can pay now and start in January when you come back from your festivities. You can start now. But all our deliveries will be in January after the new year because we won't have time to do all the teas and then package the vagina steam herbs and then send to you. If we tell you that, we'll be lying to you. But you can pay and start in January. You can pay and start now. But the shippings will be done by next year so if anybody have a question i'm here for the question before we can call it a night does anybody have any question for me pertaining fertility pertaining the new year i have a question I, this christmas i told my husband i want to eat a live turkey i don't want those frozen one so does anybody have a turkey for me please I'm not saying anybody that is selling so that I'll buy you. Anybody that wants to give me turkey, turkey me self. I want gift. Maybe only when they collect gift. That is my own question. Anybody have a turkey? Chicken turkey. I want to eat it. So I'm waiting for the questions, please. Does anybody have a question? Why we are waiting for the questions? Okay. Um, okay, you are sending me a DM. Thank you. But I'll have to finish here before I answer you because this is my work for I'm talking to you on. So if the question delays because I'm still here with you. And then why we are, are waiting for the questions to come, please, by all means, if you have anybody that is very toxic to you, please dismiss the person for New Year. Do not carry baggage into the New Year. You know, some people, they are gas, they, let me call the new language I used to hear on the internet, gaslighting you, but you don't know that these people are, those people that will enter you, be talking to you indirectly, insulting you, laughing at you. They be claiming to be your friend. They want to know everything about you. And then they, you, you tell them something and then you're going to hear it in another person's mouth. And then they're claiming that they were praying and talking about you. The fact that it was a secret and they told the pastor is a sin to you. The sin against you and God. People that think you are inferior. When you are there, that's when they are talking about, ah! I start, when I saw my husband, I conceived twins. See, run away from these people. They don't mean well for you. Some of them will even take you to the hospital, but then they will go back and tell every other person what happened. Ah, do you know she does not have a wound? Why doctor has not said that though? It is their own dictionary that say you don't have a wound. They are saying all sorts of things about you. Please leave these people alone. Some of them might be family members. Please leave them alone. And if you have a spouse that does not close mouth and they must tell everybody, some of them are mommies or uh, mommies boys or mommies girls, daddy's girls or daddy's boys, try to limit what they know. In as much as they say it's a partnership, sometimes you go to the hospital alone and then have your results. And when you go with them, you can talk to your doctor that limits how much should be spilled. Because this is my partner. I don't know. I don't want them to know this much. Because that, those are the things that the devil used at the beginning of the year and then run with. And most of we Christians, we, we are not as um, vibrant as the devil is. We relax so much. We say, I've put it in the hands of God. And then somebody has gone to say something and the devil has picked. They will enter you indirectly. You will say something that you are not meant to say. Sometimes they will, they will, you will even give them the answer they need without you knowing. And then they, will, they, are, they are working on it against you without your knowledge please by all means increase your prayer fire talk to god more when they say pray it doesn't mean that you must wake up and be screaming you can talk to god even when you are driving when you are cooking when you are taking your bath even when you are working in your office on your computer you can be talking to god in your heart you mustn't be screaming and praying in tongues before his prayer no but by all means have a relationship with god create a prayer altar with your god these prayers that you think they are small, 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 they are the ones that make the devil afraid of you. So, since there's no question, I uh, will be waiting for anybody that wants to do our program against the next year or this year uh, to set their new year as part of their new year goals and resolution. I'll be waiting for you in my DM. So, the discount starts this night. I'll be posting it how much is in original fee and then how much is the discounted fee 
uh, tell somebody that you know that wants to do our program or needs to be on this program and please by all means there's nothing in this world that is easy some people will pay and they'll say oh it's not realistic oh it's not doable it's everything in this world is doable and everything in this world does not come easy my programs are one of the easiest things to do unless you don't want to do it because you want to conceive you want to have a child and you are saying eating food as small as eating food is, is hard <laughs> and I'm wondering how do you want to have this child? Because childbirth is not easy. Easy operation. Some of you here are going through secondary infertility, so you know. Whether it's through CS or it's through vaginal delivery, none of them is easy. None of them is easy. Is it that when you have this child, it's easy? I think even when you have this child, it's even more difficult than when you are pregnant. So nothing in this life is easy. If you truly want to do it, you will do it. If you truly want to do it, you will do it. And when you do it, you will much get your results by all means. So, um, am I free to go now? I'm free to go now, right? Since we do not have questions, everything is straightforward. Babe, come and pray for them for the year. Let them go. Um. <laughs> They are waiting for you to say, ah, ah. Come and say hello. Your prayer people are here. <laughs> Let us see you. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, you read the story you say I'm going for that hospital. Yeah, so, how are we all doing today? God bless us. I, I was connected on the live on the other side of the office. <clears throat> I must say it was quite an inspiring one. Um, I know that as we as we put to practice all that have been discussed tonight, 2024 is your year. But I want you to know that with you, the year is not over until God says it's over. Good evening, everyone. Ite, Ite, Olua. Part elegant. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Okay. Um, yes, we may be talking about 2024 already, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, on God's calendar, there's so much time for him to do what he desires to do in your life. As I am speaking right now, the Lord is showing me several people that are connected right now who will still test positive to pregnancy before this year will run out. The Lord is showing me somebody already in your two weeks wait after your IVF procedure and the Lord said it's a positive already. Amen. I see the test three positive already in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will testify before the 25th of this December Amen. to the glory of his name. Amen. Now stay strong everybody. It is not over until God says it's over. And as you hold on to him, he will give you a miracle that will shock you. During the Sunday prayers, I shared the testimony of a lady who practically had ruled herself out of this year. That the year is over already. But according to her, she saw her period a couple of weeks ago. And somehow she started throwing up and all of a sudden decided to take a pregnancy test. And then the test came back positive, a home test. She was wondering, how can this be? I just saw my period a few days ago, you know. And she would proceed for blood tests and it still came back positive. Now, humanly, her testimony defied every logic because you do a period, you require days before you get into your fertile window. And then with the little I know, you also require a couple of days or weeks before you you have implantation and then a positive pregnancy test but all that was compressed under two weeks god did a miracle did a period wasn't quite long and yes it is a viable pe pregnancy i want you to know that god is going to break protocols for your sake god is going to compress something 
by all means to give you a miracle before this year runs out in the name of Jesus. Be encouraged, don't give up. That person who is in tears permanently know that your season of celebration is here. And I see you testifying to the glory of God's name. Very quickly, I'll pray with you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for these ones, O oh Lord, that have spared time to listen to your daughter. Thank you, Father, because your word says, as you speak to me, the Spirit entered me. Ezekiel 2, 2. I pray, Lord God, that as your daughter has spoken to them, let your Spirit follow up and enter into them to quicken them, O Lord, on their feet, to get up and go about to do that which they need to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we ask, O Lord, tonight we'll learn that it is a partnership. As they partner with you, Lord, in this season, I know that, Lord, this partnership will be a fruitful one in the name of Jesus. Whatever step they need to take, Lord, I ask that you will order their step in the mighty name of Jesus. For those, O oh Lord, that need to meet at the right time of their cycle, Lord, reveal that time to them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that need to proceed for that IVF procedure, Lord, I demand tonight you will order their step to the right clinic in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I pray, Lord, that tonight let it, let it be the beginning of a new thing in the name of Jesus. For that woman who is already ovulating, Lord, let this be the night that she meets her husband and the conception process begins. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name. We look forward to hearing glorious testimonies from your children Amen. before this year runs out. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Yeah. Let the best come to your children, O Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yes, In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Congratulations. Okay, uh, Father Mom is just reminding me right now that remember during the Sunday prayers I made mention of our hospital visitation. Uh, we'll be going on Thursday after the, the Sunday prayer. I had a couple of people sent in their, their, their little contributions to their contribution, I beg your pardon, for the success of that exercise. I'm calling on us, as many of us that, are, that believe in the oil on this platform, to also, to also key into it. Okay, she's also reminding me that some are hearing what I'm saying for the very first time. In case you don't join us, during the Sunday prayers, I'm extending a hand of invitation to you. We hold prayers on this platform every Sunday, 8.30 p.m. We call it When Fertile Moms Pray. And you, God is doing amazing things on that platform. You can connect with us this Sunday. And as you do so, the Lord bless you. Now, the visitation I'm talking about is every last part, the last part of the year, especially during the Christmas season. We, we go to hospitals to especially maternity hospitals to assist in paying hospital bills of fetal moms or of, of mothers, new moms that have given birth to babies and for one reason or the other, financial reasons are unable to clear their hospital bills to return home and celebrate the Christmas season with their families. So we, we, we visit the hospitals as much as, as much contributions and donations we have. We add to what we personally desire to do and then we we'll go to these hospitals as much as we can help clear these hospital bills so these new moms can return home to their families with their new babies and enjoy the Christmas season. So we are calling for your, soliciting for your own support and more or less like an avenue for you to sow into the life of somebody. I'd like you to tag that seed to your fruitfulness. Say, Father, as I assist this fruitful woman or this mother or this family that I've given birth to return home, I ask that you give me my own miracle. And then as you pray that prayer on that seed, you can send it to the account details that was posted. Um, I posted the account details on our Sunday program. The replay of the live is on, is on Fetal Mom's page. You scroll through, you see a video or a picture of me in her profile praying on Sunday, and you check the caption, the account details are there. And as you do that, the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Let's do something that will hasten the release of our testimonies. And as we do that, 
The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. I look forward to hearing your testimony. God bless you. And see you on Sunday. Okay. So thank you all. And um, I'll be waiting for those that want to do our uh, participate in our discount in my DM. Someone was asking if um, the meal plan is for both husband and wife. Uh, it depends on what their challenges are. It depends on what your fertility challenge is. If it warrants that only one person would do it, then one person would do it. But by all means, I used to encourage both partners to be on it so that even if you don't have a, a particular partner does not have a fertility challenge, they can still uh, enhance their fertility and general health so that when the other partner's body is responding, it will be easier to get pregnant. Then we have a couple's uh, plan as well for those uh, couples that have uh, similar challenges they have a couple's plan together we call it the his and her conception but all that we'll discuss it in my dm so thank you all for joining i appreciate your time and god bless you have a good night rest bye